Let's look at this problem. Free body diagram. Define our axes. And then sum the forces equals MA. So this one, I've got an object and I notice it's in a curved path, a red flag, you know, if you are given the radius of something, that's a red flag, might be in a curved path. So I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of this car and then I'm gonna sum the forces equals mass times acceleration. All right, but let me read the question. Determine the maximum speed that the Jeep can travel over the crest of the hill and not lose contact with the road. You can imagine the, if you go too fast, You'll fly, you'll go airborne, right? Why is that? Well, we'll kind of look at that. Uh, but if you go fast, then you can't make the curve and you'll go airborne. So if we were to draw a free body diagram at this uh, extreme value right here. So here's, here's my car. I've got the weight of the car, mg. All right, I've got the weight of the car, mg. Uh, is it speeding up or slowing down? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I might have some force of friction. If it's accelerating in the tangential direction, you'll see. We may not even look at that direction, but there, there could be some force in that direction. And then, well, actually, we'll, we'll, I'll, let's think about that for a second. The next thing I was about to draw, don't draw this. The next thing I was about to draw was this end of the ground pushing up on there, right? But what is, this is a special case. If we want to find the maximum speed that the Jeep can travel and not lose contact with the road, how about we find the speed where it is about to lose contact with the road? What is happening when it's about to lose contact with the road? Yeah, yeah. So do you see that what it's really telling us is to set n equal to zero? And also, if, if we don't have any n, if we don't have any, if it's not touching, then we won't have any friction. So this is a special case. And there's some other cases we'll talk about where if it says it's about to do something, it's about to leave the track or the road, then go ahead and say it's still right there but it's not touching anymore, so there's no N um, anymore. So the free body diagram is really just the MG. All right, so I drew my object, I drew the forces acting on it. Now let me define my axes. Should I just do a usual X, Y? No, it's in a circular path, so let me define normal and tangential. What direction is normal? Always, normal is always into the curve, right? So I would say normal is, right, that direction into the curve is normal. And I'd say to the right is tangential. So let me sum the forces in the normal direction. I don't have that in, right, n is equal to zero. And so I've just got mg, sum of the forces equals mass times a normal, what is a normal v squared over rho. Uh, so let me go ahead. G is what? Yeah, yeah. I was about to put 9.81. But notice that that row was in feet, 250 feet. All right. So velocity, 89.7 feet per second. So simple problem if you realize what it was really telling you was to go ahead and set the force n equal to zero. Okay, uh, what, would, what if we were in a, did y'all y'all see it, saw that GIF, I call it a GIF, uh, that I sent last night of the guy, you know, running through the loop, right? He's gotta go really fast in order to make it through the loop. If we, if we were on a, a roller coaster or some sort of cart that was just sitting on top of the track, what would be happening here if it barely makes it through the loop? You know, if it barely makes it through the loop, what is kind of special about that point right there? <clears throat> if it barely makes it through there. 
here's a suggestion. Is velocity zero right there? So maybe if it barely makes it through there, maybe I'll just set velocity equal to zero. No, no. It would have already left the track earlier. What is happening right here? If it barely makes it through here, it, this is just sitting on top of the track. If it barely makes it through here, this normal force of the track pushing down on it, it's about to leave the track. The normal force would be zero. All right, so, so this is kind of another, I'd have mg, and I would say it, it's about to leave the track, and if it falls, if it leaves the track, then it's no longer touching the track, so the normal force would be zero. So I could sum the forces in normal direction equals m a normal. I could figure out it needs at least a minimum velocity right up at that point of this. I could calculate it and say, okay, I need at least minimum velocity right here, or it's going to leave the track. All right, so there's some cases where you know, it's not like we set V equal to zero, we set N equal to zero. Okay, I'm going.